Hi everybody, welcome to my channel for new battle reports. So this was a test game against the new KOE book, Kingdom of Equitaine. And uh, yeah, I was able to get in touch with uh, somebody that I, that I met at ETC this summer. So it was really funny to, to be in touch with, with him again. He was playtester for the book. I think he was also involved somehow in the design or the team, the lab team. So yeah, I was really happy that he was available uh, for the game. Thanks again, Fair, for the game. It was really a pleasure to, to play against you after we met and discussed a little bit this summer at ETC. So uh, this was a practice game. I took one of the lists I wanted to try, which is um, Double Prophet on, on Bull of Shamut, Double Adept. Then we have a Commissioner, somehow, yeah, BSB, uh, a little bit fighty, with Destiny's Call, Pearl Weapon, King Slayer. Then we have an Adept of Pyro, to have Triple Adept and a lot of um, Blast at my disposal, with Binding on the Vassal Steed to be able to chaff if needed. 20 Blunder, uh, 2 times 20 levies that can chaff or be useful with the march, some, sometimes also for objectives. Uh, 37 Shaked Slaves, 2 times 5 Anointed, with Ped Weapon, Musician and Musician Champion for the unit that will include the Commissioner. Then we have uh, an Infernal Bastion and a Kadim Titan. So, fighty list overall. And here's the KOE list. So, when I'm recording this, I don't know exactly which of the item will be uh, known already. So, I don't want to go too much into detail. What I did is just to explain to you or written down the couple of stuff that will matter during this game. I think that that's the, the good way that I found to solve it. So, here as, as a general Lord on a Hippo. Fighty Lord, that's I can say I don't have many tools to deal with him in combat and the important thing is that he does multiple wound 2 against fear which is kind of huge against me because most of my combat units or all of them are doing fear, are uh, causing fear which is uh, a little bit of an issue and he has ward save against fire which is annoying for me. Then he has a, I think it's the option hero of the people or folk Folk Hero, I think it's the now the name. Or oh, not all the names are up to date, but yeah, it's called Folk Hero, I think. And he was the BSB guy uh, with a one up. Then we have a uh, second lord, Fighty Lord, with great weapon. I think he was up to strength seven, and he has plus one Aegis against magical attack. Uh, basically, against my Kadim Titan grind, he has a four up ward save as an example. Then we have a damsel adept of uh, druidism on a unicorn with a book to have plus two to cast and magical heirloom. 13 feudal knight, which are the equivalent of the real knight, uh, with a banner. Important to know, so you, you know already banner of Roland, I think it didn't change, just plus one ages against range attack. <coughs> and the aspirant heirloom is basically plus two strength and AP. If, even if you don't charge, basically if you fail charge, or if somebody charge you in the front, I think that's the condition, you get plus two strengths on the first round of, com of combat. Which is nice, because you don't have the problem to fail charge and then get charged and lose the unit, basically. So that's that's a nice option. Uh, 14 archers, 39 levies, didn't change much. 9 penitent knights, these are really scary models. They have two hellspawn each, uh, strength 5 mount, and some high quality attack too, and are uh, unstable, meaning they are really resilient. Uh, Mounted Yeoman times five, five Naiads, which are mage, basically they are conclave. Uh, two Friar Lantern, what I can say about them, they can flee, they, they have to flee if you charge them, then they can rally and move, so sort of faint flight, and if they go over you, they give you debuffs. And one Sacred Relicary to boost a little bit the peasants. Spell selection for both, so yeah, I took the two that can do some damage against cavalry, same goes for Breath of Corruption, and then I, I didn't have a lot of combat buff, basically I have only Glory of Gold as a bounce spell, uh, ward save, and the rest are more fighty spell, I could have picked maybe plus two armor save, would have made sense, or glory of, an additional Glory of Gold maybe, I wanted to have tools basically to deal with the hippo, because I, I will struggle to fight him in combat, and I figured out if I take some spell that can damage him, despite the basalt infusion, I might yeah do a wound or two, and that might be decisive because he has only four wounds. So that was my idea. His damsel picked the following spell, so he took damage spell, the summer growth, hereditary, and then with Dyad he had access to deceptive claim against crying. So combat buff. And we played yeah, spoil of war on uh, Encircle. 
matchup analysis. So yeah, Hippo Duke, Hippo Duke is, is strong in the matchup. Second Lord is also a little bit scary, but I have some tools to deal with him. Secondary, I think the carry. This list, at least, I don't know the, about the other list, but this list might struggle to play the three tokens. Um, Leadership-wise, it need to be somehow compact, and the unit need to support each other because they are not so wide in the front, so they cannot look at everything. So that's that. That could be an issue for him to play the three token. His high movement value means I might be in trouble, so I need to use unit that can absorb charges: slave, bastion, bodyguard, or chaff uh, to not be in big trouble. Then the Titan, I expect him to be really good in the matchup because of the grind, uh, high strength attack, good movement value, resilient too. Uh, bulls can be anno annoying too because of divine attacks and uh, mostly the movement. If you check his unit, other than the hippo, he hasn't too much stuff to protect the flanks, uh, meaning he, he could be annoyed on the flanks by my small bulls. Especially since he has no range damage to threaten them, so they could really move freely on the flank. Estimation, pff, I didn't know exactly, so I put drawish open game. I think it's quite open since it's spoil, we need to go at each other and it's a practice game. We want to see what new KOE does in doing combat, so yeah, I want to, to have an open game and we'll see if that happens. Deployment, so he won the roll for side, gave me this part of the map with the annoying impassable in my deployment zone. I think makes sense and then I didn't want to drop for first because I thought I might struggle to really push forward hard and I want to see what he does to maybe claim some free spoil because I know that he will use a little bit some uh, one part of the map more than the other. So I let him start to drop and he decided to drop everything for first turn. He hasn't anymore the, the prayer obligation so he cannot he can start no problem so he put him in here the big boss of Ferdal with the Lord uh, BSB and damsel lantern lantern naiads big unit of peasants with the reliquary hippo duke archer and the penitent knight and my counter deployment basically um, I go for the free spoil with one vassal unit that's no problem and then on each flank I place a bull to try to be annoying go around him threaten the flanks and threaten with multiple charges then I have some paired weapon anointed paired weapon with the BSB and champion a vassal to be ready to chaff bastion unit slaves small mage a cannon titan so basically I wanted just to make sure that if he goes on the spoil I can see with the BSB unit I can see this way also a bit red threatening be annoying for him yeah um, so we'll see what he does this on one he uses the chaff to chaff my two anointed unit and he, as you can see my vassal unit is a bit blocked at the moment so um, I should have maybe drop it on either way of the anointed to be able to go around and chaff um, that would have been maybe better because now I'm threatened by by charge from turn two on the right side he has no fear of my bastion unit slave or or titan or bull so here I have a eight swift right charge here I don't know exactly but should be similar maybe nine uh, here it's nine on two dice and here I don't know but I think maybe a nine as well. So yeah, he gave me a couple of uh, middle long charges to tempt me, but he want to grab this uh, spoil. And as you know, they are unstable and stuff. So you know that if he grabs it, it will be hard for me to, to remove him uh, the, the token. In his magic phase, he cast uh, <coughs> plus uh, minus two weapon skill on my Titan because yeah that was the main threat for him to, to charge him then he tried to put our target distracting but failed and I dispel hereditary with shooting him did one wound to the titan and that was it and on my turn one I spotted that he chaffed them on the flank but he chaffed those on the front and because of the house and my fat footprint uh, I couldn't close the door meaning he has to close and this open uh, the possibility for them to charge out so yeah I decided to take the opportunity and I completed the charge so this was a 9 swift stride to the flank this was an 8 swift stride I took it as well and I think I didn't charge with the slave just move forward Bastion moved to be in range to shoot at Hippo and be threatening for the, for the rest um, and then I placed my bull in some nice spot I took the vassal to chaff him to the flank and basically took my bull within 6 because this one was general so I needed 6 uh, inch to be protected against terror because he has a way with the horizon token to give to himself terror check um, so I wanted to give to have at least leadership 9 I could fail it but at least have a 9 
So that was the plan, and on the left I will just slowly move towards uh, the spoil. That's the idea. In my magic phase, um, I get breast weapon off, kill three of the knights. Quicksilver Lash, he did three ward save with his griffin, uh, hippogriff, so I did nothing. Shooting a bastion did one wound to the hippo, which is nice, and close combat. On the right, I managed to, to kill him. Um, so I did a lot of wounds, and then due to instable, he popped. So yeah, lucky me. Uh, that was a, a big, big mistake for him that he paid a heavy price. Uh, we discussed that together. I asked him, do you want to, to correct the position? And he told me, and I think he's right. To, no, no, I did a mistake. Oh, you need to pay for it. And this is also something that I try to apply in my games. I always say you need to pay heavily for your mistakes. So that was a mistake, but obviously it will open the game because he has some option now to counter charge me. And here I took I took uh, care of the chaff. He's turn 2, so he charged my vassal and took the charge. I didn't know that he could charge. It, it was a bit strange because we we discussed about the, the list and stuff while we started the game. I wasn't able to discuss on voice the whole time, so I didn't understand all the rules, but that was also the idea of this this training, try to, try to understand and get to know a little bit better the book. So here I took the charge. What I did is put my VSB here on top because if he wanted to charge with both, he needed the hippo to charge here to be able here to wheel and get the peasants. Um, on this position. So I knew that Hippo couldn't be in base contact with my BSB in this position and I could challenge out the Duke with the champion if he challenged uh, to make sure I'm bodyguard and then I have plenty of counter charges available for me. He decided to put the uh, lantern here just to... I'm not sure if he debuff something but at least to make me charge that he flees and then I have to take a redirect check and I might just fail the check. Um... Other than that, yeah, that's it. Didn't move much with the archer. Magic phase. He failed minus two weapon skill on them, I guess. Uh, then he failed art target two. And I was able to dispel the rest. So, yeah, uh, not much for him. He was able to get a... Uh, to raise a knight. I think as a rule within the... Some unit can raise a knight. So he was able to raise a knight per turn, I think. But it doesn't work in combination with release. So it's one or the other. But I, I found that pretty pretty cool. A close combat, I had one save to make with the Titan, which I did. And then close combat, um, I pass my 9 rollable, kill a couple of guys. He kills my champion, obviously, um, because he multi-wounds too. And then he reformed in a way that my Titan couldn't charge Hippo in the front because he used my base against me, which was smart. But then... Um, you will see Titan can charge something else. And here, this combat, I think we s we made um, a wrong pursue move. So I break, obviously. And then the pivot, because he decided to pursue this direction. So the pivot put him in this position. And what we did is, okay, there is the bull, so you cannot be that way. You have to wheel less. And then he was able to impact my unit here, which was not my intention. But I think that's played wrong. I think what should have been played according to the rules is pivot pivot like that then move forwards and if there is no legal position to sit because of the bull then just move back to the last legal position which would have been the max pivot without touching me and then it just stop here i think that should have been played that way meaning if he pursue in straight line it couldn't impact them which was my idea so yeah we played that wrong but uh, yeah no big harm it's just a practice game so uh, if you can just confirm me in the com in the comment that it should be solved the way I just explained, meaning he pivot 90 degrees, move forward, either he can land after the bull and then it's a legal position, no problem, or he couldn't and then he just uh, yeah pivot and end until the last legal position, which is just uh, part of the pivot basically. So yeah, it land because of the of of what we did of, of the way we we solved it. It was able to impact my anointed, which is yeah not perfect for me. Then I took some charges, so I had just space, but this was really close. I had just space to charge with the titan against the the naiad to push him away, pass the nine rollable, and then charge here to the corner, and then charge a bastion here. So yeah, that was close, just enough space because of my big bases, it was not easy, but I was able to do it. So charge, charge, which should be huge here in combat. And what I did here to mitigate a little bit what he might do, because next turn is his turn, I just put one character one inch away on each side of his middle of the bases. And basically what he can do is just look up or look down. He has no other good reform possibilities. 
So that was a, a good trick that you can use when you are in such a position against a rank and file unit that wants to that has a free pivot on your turn and can, can charge. You can limit a little bit what how they can reform. These guys continue to move forward, and I brought my slave towards the left because I know I have to slow down this unit. This right part of the board should be in control now. In my magic phase, um, I got 2d6 strength 4 off, did a couple of wounds to the Nyads with um, the Hex spell, Cascading Fire. Then with a Breast Weapon, I did a couple of wounds more to the Nyad, but I hadn't much to do. Actually, I couldn't buff this combat because I have no champion, so that was a bit annoying. Basically, I have only Glory of Gold. He knows he has to keep a couple of dice to dispel it. And then other than that, I have pretty much nothing to do, nothing relevant at least. Close combat here, he break me, I flee, I go off the board, he can just uh, pivot towards the um, looking up. And this close combat, yeah, I win by a lot because he challenge with the hippo, take it with the champion. And then I bring so much static res, I have like 4 rank due to legend, uh, flank, big flank, charge, stand that. Uh, and then all the wounds that I do against the peasant, so this is too much. He lose by 9 or 10. Hippo break, I don't catch him with the Bastion, but I impact the flank and uh, Titan just slide towards the right and other than that we still combat. So his turn next, he rallies the Hippo, which is uh, important. Here we combat, um, yeah, he rally one of these guys, use them to block my reforms as much as he could. He counter charge my uh, Canning Titan with his Duke and the boss didn't move uh, much. Um, yeah, magic phase. He got our target distracting area. I hesitated to, to bindings call that and I should have done it, I guess. Uh, then he tried to put hereditary. I wanted to stop his horizon to token to, to buff him. Um, and so I dispelled that and Kadim Titan. So close combat, yeah. Kadim Titan. I tried to grind the character and strike against the unit, I guess, because I didn't want to lose base contact. Actually, what I did wrong is also I should have reformed one file more to the right to make sure that he stays in the world combat and he suffers from all this combat result. Should have done that. And that was kind of huge because if I kill more than nine model, which is likely, then I lose base contact. And I could have give me another five model to lose base contact with the Titan, which could have been helpful. So basically, he passed two world save against my grinding. Um, so I did nothing to him. He did one wound to me. Uh, I do a couple of wounds here, but he has a good ward save, but he breaks, yeah, because of the, again, big static res, uh, disrupted, so I pursue him with the Bastion, and uh, post combat pivot with them, and here we see in combat. My turn three, so I charge, the f I, and I, I catch as well the peasants, so my turn three, I charge out with the BSB against the lantern, he has to flee, and then redirect onto them, here I with the pursue move, I got in contact with him, so he cannot flee the, because there is no reaction. And then I will have another run of three in the flank of the Gryphon to block him, which is nice. The small bull charge on the six swift side, the flank of the Nyads. And then this unit of anointed go on the spoil. Same goes for the vassal on the left. So I should be fine with uh, secondary now. And I counter charge with the vassal against the flank to just bring massive combat result. Charge flank, big flank, three rank, which is nice. And use the small mage to just chaff the remaining combat unit. And bro the general towards here to cast some uh, my two blast against his hippo. Try to do some wounds. Maybe my, if I'm lucky, uh, kill him. Uh, magic, I fail Silver Spike, I got Quicksilver Lash off the tunes to the Lord, which is huge. And I also got a small buff, I think, on the Titan, maybe Riddle to Wound due to Alchemy. I think that was it. Close combat, the Titan did two wounds to him, he did only one to me. Uh, he lose by like a lot, by seven, I guess. So he broke with the Duke. I think, I, yeah, pursue towards the left. I catch him and the slaves impact the flank of them buying me a free turn of chaff basically uh, so that was nice here obviously i killed that overrun to the flank of the hippo and here we still combat here i break them and catch them and ended up one inch away of the bastion he's done four so here in combat here as well here as well his magic um i just he has not much spell left i binding scroll the healing didn't want him to heal the hippo with one wound left um he didn't rally one of the lantern that had only one wound left, fled off. The other one is here to try to be annoying for me. I dispelled hereditary. Um, and yeah, he got the d6 to kill the chaff here. I knew that was a risk. I didn't want him to get any buffs off. 
um, just to make sure he dies. I figured out since I block him for one turn, maybe two, and then we can see what happens. I don't need him that much, so yeah, he, he killed him with the blast. Got um, the zero spell and then the d6 and killed me. Bastion, so I kill him with impact. He raised again because of the tablet. I did seven wound to my Bastion, nearly killed him because of the multi wound too, but he has only strength five, which is not much. So nearly killed me, I didn't crush him, but I win by too much. He loses by, I think by two, and he breaks, and I just catch him and ended up here. So yeah, very annoying for him. Yeah, I kill a couple of more, but I think he sticks. And here we tied. I did nothing. He killed a couple to me, and we tied, and he turned around because he has, I think, three standard, something like that, which is not bad. So my turn four again, same trick as before. Use the Titan to the flank, making sure that if he reforms, he can only look up or down and cannot charge anything. Here in combat, and I place my bull to threaten him, but basically I have no good way to get rid of that unit. It will not be easy for me to go against that unit. Um, so what happened is he will break me, pursue me out of line of sight of the Titan and then charge me to push me off the board and end up here, meaning on my turn five, I cannot charge him. I could have had maybe a charge turn six by bringing everybody, but I think I'm not likely to to um, break steadfast and I might as well lose a couple of models. So we decided to stop here because there was no big interest. Maybe I could have taken that unit, but doesn't matter much to be honest. So we ended up like that. Um, post game analysis, yeah, obviously, when you can get a uh, free spoil, it's always nice because you, you're you on the front foot regarding objective. Uh, the map left me no big choice regarding deployment, so maybe I should have start since I don't have a lot of choice how I want to deploy. I don't know. Um, I was happy to optimize my counters, but as you can see, if he, if he does a better job at chaffing turn one, I could have been in trouble because then what do I do? I cannot chaff out. So yeah, he, he caused me some troubles and maybe I could have, uh, by starting, I could just avoid him to push me hard and maybe claim some board space. So I think in hindsight, I could have maybe start the game since I don't have so many choice to how I want to to, to deploy. I don't know. Uh, turn two, like I said, I think we, we didn't play right, but uh, yeah, I think also I could have maybe placed the Vassal a bit better. I don't know. Regarding the list, yeah, bodyguard allowed me to, to take risk on anointed, which was uh, nice because I knew that I could take some charge. I lacked uh, close combat buff. Basically, I had uh, almost no buff this game, so that was uh, an issue. And yeah, um, when the vassals are blocked, they cannot chaff, which is a little bit of an issue because they were black, blocked by the chaff and therefore I was uh, it was a bit annoying for me. So I could have anticipated that, maybe switch both the vassal and anointed during deployment to make sure that he likely he cannot really block them if they are on the left and he want also to chaff two unit of anointed so i could have done something slightly different here to make sure i can chaff him in return so yeah i had i think two solutions to avoid the situation that i was in after turn one if, if he would have chaffed perfectly I, it could have been a bit annoying for me to, to deal with chaff and not be in trouble afterwards so guys that was it thanks for watching and to on the channel